Okay, okay. So, Bismillah walhamdulillah. I have a very special guest today. Um, he, uh, well, I'll just let him explain his situation. He used to be uh, part of the Ismaili sect, which is a sub branch within the Shia uh, thought, you can say. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, just uh, adjust what I'm saying. And, uh, and because these organizations that are like this, they have kind of like a, you can say like a cult-like makeup. So I wanted, uh, and he wants, it's his mission in his life to let the Muslim world or the world know that uh, how these organizations are a detriment to the Muslim world. And uh, from a perspective of eschatology specifically, I want to mention, this is interesting because this is what the Jal will do, right? This is what um, this is what fascists are all about too, like from a political perspective. Uh, fascist thinkers, uh, the Nazis, and so on and so forth. So that's just a side point. Now, uh, brother, if you can introduce your name and a little bit about yourself, and then we'll take it from there, inshallah. Sure. <laughs> First of all, uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, express myself on your channel. And uh, I wish uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that the Muslim Ummah will uh, understand what I'm trying to say and help me in my cause, which I will explain in a minute. So my name is Salim Lalani. And I was born in an Ismaili family. And I spent most of my life as an Ismaili. And um, f after 55 years of my life, I realized that this Ismaili system is actually a cult. And I left and I researched. Um, and it took me seven years to research the whole thing, which included a little bit of Islam as well. And uh, then I launched a YouTube campaign to let the world know, in particular, the Muslim Ummah, what is going on behind closed doors in the name of Islam. Mm. So that is in brief uh, what I am about. So, uh, brother, if uh, it's okay with you, I will basically start addressing uh, your questions that you sent me uh, one after another. Yeah, and I might have some in the middle. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. And, and that is the whole point of me having uh, me being here so that you can ask me in, in case you get confused. The first thing, first question you asked was why should the Muslim world care hmm. about Ismaili system? It's a, generally, I, the Muslims are like, you know, they're doing their thing, we're doing our thing, they're a minority, who cares, right? It's like, we're not concerned because we don't know what's happening behind the scenes and how it's affecting us. So that's, please, correct, sorry. Correct, okay. Why should Muslim world care? It's a very serious question because in Islam, very little understanding that I have of Islam is that its foundation is the Shahada, which is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Basically, what it means is that Allah is the central authority, He's only one, and there's nobody above Him. And the prophet is his servant or is his messenger. Now, what is happening is Allah is, you know, in the Quran, uh, you, will, you, will, you will see that half the Quran, the holy book, is full of this particular uh, appeal by, the, uh, by Allah that I will forgive everything. I will not forgive shirk. Now, this is exactly what Aga Khan does behind closed doors. Hmm. And not implicitly, explicitly. Hmm. Okay. 
so he will not utter the word i am allah but he will appoint people to indoctrinate the public into saying that he is allah so there are devotional literatures that basically are available on the internet which we will cover a little bit later but devotional literature is not the only place where he says he is allah hmm. it is all over the place once you go behind the doors of jamaat khana hmm. which is jamaat khana is a place where they worship aga khan hmm. just like people worship allah in a in a in a masjid hmm. jamaat khana is a place where they actually worship allah hmm. oh i'm sorry aga khan so that is one reason why muslim umma should care about what i am going to talk about because one reason you're giving is that they're doing something in the name of islam and muslims that's not part of islam and muslims no they they cannot be muslims hmm. uh once you basically join allah with somebody else islam is finished so to say ismailis are muslims or shias is not right they cannot be muslims of any kind hmm. because the entire muslim brotherhood it it agrees to one thing they may differ on so many different things but on one thing they everybody agrees that there is only one allah hmm. and and we cannot dare to join allah with anybody else hmm. Ismaili system is the only one that does that but behind the closed doors hmm. behind extreme security extreme secrecy hmm. and because i have come out from those behind doors i am qualified to testify that this is exactly what is happening and i have in my see i have produced a video series which your um which your listeners or your what uh, your viewers can uh, watch this video series is called god and money god and uh, money by okay. god and money by by salim lalani okay. uh, even if you put my name salim lalani it will pop up uh but if it doesn't then just type god and money salim lalani and you will see two lots of series one in english one in urdu let me just uh, do this for our uh, audience so they can yeah. um let me see if i can do this for our audience so they can go to youtube and do this uh yeah. yep there you are there you are that's okay. it So let me just show so you know God and money the secret world of Aga Khan money laundering wow uh money and god uh and this is all about their cult basically so you have a lot to say i mean even one is very even one interview a, is not going to really do and this is your uh your the diary of a common man that's it that's it mafia and i think there's a lot of lessons to uh learn from this okay let's go back so i'll put a link in uh, inshallah also in my uh comment section for the people to see thank you thank you <clears throat> so that is uh, brother that is one reason why islamic ummah should care but uh, i have some sad news for you islamic umma doesn't care mm. whether you desecrate allah that's fine no problem at all but you cannot say anything about the prophet of islam if you insult the prophet of islam you are in serious trouble but if you desecrate allah you join partners with allah muslim umma so far and this is the key word brother so far my experience my conversations with the muslim umma they have clearly told me this is individuals 
not organizations not people who are uh, who are in authority this is individuals they say to me if if he does uh, uh, if we desecrate allah if he basically com- if he compares himself to allah good luck to him we are we are very forgetful people you know uh, we we are nice people we don't do anything but in the same breath they will not forgive anybody who will desecrate the prophet of islam mm. so this hypocrisy amongst the muslim umma to me personally mm. so far has been extremely frustrating mm. because islam in islam the prophet is a servant mm. allah is the central authority and 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 allah is expressing himself repeatedly in the thing that this is the issue i'm not happy yeah and then also it's an insult to the prophet because he's supposed to be like the example of humanity and here's another person who is using uh, a weakness of human being faith spirituality uh, in order to exploit them right and so it is also a insult to the office of prophethood in a sense uh, you know what's interesting i don't know if you have any thoughts but sh- the muslim umma should declare them as non muslims the way that they've dis- declared qadianis as non muslims correct but there is a political reason for that mm. and this is where this is where the muslim umma has been a little bit uh, uh, inconsistent in their approach see with the qadianis what they did is that they they basically came up with a, a new prophet mm. okay and hence the muslim umma stood up and they said that no 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 this cannot be allowed and hence you are not muslims from here on but anybody can become allah that's fine with muslims and i cannot understand that how can a muslim not understand the basic concept of islam and this is not one person i'm talking about brother this is many many people who are my supporters mm. and i say to them stand behind me stand up i have stuck my neck out for allah okay mm. i i i i i'm showing my face okay my name everybody knows me okay i mean serious physical trouble uh, mm. by saying what i'm saying on my on my youtube channel mm. and and i'm fighting for allah mm. i don't care if somebody kills me that's fine mm. but i will fight mm. but not one muslim is willing to come and support me mm. they saying this is not our problem now you tell me brother what kind of islam have we got here It's where very, we don't very, understand very interesting because <clears throat> there's this figure in islamic uh eschatology right this figure we call dajjal and he comes out as a prophet and then later on declares to be god and you know he's a the great he's considered like same as christianity very similar the idea of the antichrist the great deceiver and i think that uh th- this is a very interesting ploy that you're mentioning that somebody says i'm god the muslim world doesn't care and he can take them Correct. on a ride and Correct. and 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 so this is very interesting i find that very interesting the personality yes. mentioned the mention in quran uh, firaun he says the same thing and rabbukum i'm your lord i'm your god which Correct. also the quran mentions so this kind of like using this kind of like idea um uh, is mentioned in the quran and and unfortunately muslims do not care and it's it is hypocrit- uh, hypocritical to like right. declare qadiani is non muslims and yet not declare uh, aghani uh, non muslims that makes no sense exactly in and fact i, I swear to... even the shia brothers and sisters would be accepting of the fact that okay this is not islam i think this is and they would also want to say this is not part of shiaism this needs to be something separated from us absolutely so, so let me take so brother 
Yeah. Brother, let me say this to you. Let me give you an example how deep this problem is. Hmm. I was talking to a very, very educated man in America yesterday. Hmm. His name is Jawad Khaki. Okay. okay. Very, very educated man. Uh, and uh, from a worldly point of view, he has done really well. He told me explicitly yesterday during my conversation that I, I asked him, he basically went round and round and round in circles, arguing with me. So in the end, I asked him a simple question. I said to him, Jawad, I'm asking you a very simple question. I'm saying to you, and I'm proving to you, it is all over the internet, that Aga Khan is basically comparing himself with God. Mm. Are you prepared to speak up? Mm. He said, no. He said, no. I said, why? He said, this has got nothing to do with me. If, 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 uh, if somebody wants to do something wrong, it's up to him. You know, it's like um, if, if I have a brand, if I start a company and I have a brand called Pepsi, right? I have a Pepsi brand. The Pepsi brand belongs to me. Now, somebody else is using my brand, my logo. Correct. Correct. You no. Know, and trying to identify themselves as me, my company. Right. Correct. I would be furious. I'd take them to the law. I'd take them to the court. I'd, I'd sue Correct. them. I'd be like, you know, this is not okay. Correct. We're, Correct. We Muslims are okay with Aga Khan and other groups like that hijacking islam and uh, wearing our label and and uh, and I, I don't know maybe muslims are going through an identity crisis of some sort where their priorities are not straight in their mind correct correct and that's what it is okay now my second question as we talk about this is how do they get funded and do you think part of the reason the elite has been quiet about this is because of their economic power in the Muslim world? Okay, that is another very, very, very important question, brother. How do they get funded? See, Ismailism is not a, a, a tariqa of Islam. Like they basically claim that Ismailism is a branch, is an offshoot of, uh, is an offshoot of Shia Islam. That's what they claim. But it is not in Islam in any way. It is actually a business. So in America, you will see a lot of disco clubs. Ismaili Jamaat Khana is nothing but a club. Mm. It was established as a club 125 years ago. Mm. And it was established in a way that it will appear as a place of worship. But everything that it will do, it will, it will basically, the intention would be to create money. Mm. So the money is being extorted from the followers who are brainwashed. Mm. So when a child is born, the child is taught two things in the religious school. They will be taught that Aga Khan is Allah, number one. Number two, that he owns us. That mm. our body, our soul, our mind, our wealth, our worldly possessions, Everything belongs to Aga Khan. Mm. And he has been a, he is so kind that he has given everything back to us to live. All he is expecting is 12.5% of your monthly income to be paid to him. Wow, 12.5%. That is only the beginning. Gentlemen, Aga Khani, uh, that's more than the Christians. The Christians pay 10%. The Correct. 12 percent. 12 wow. and a half, but, but that is the beginning. I will need a separate episode just to explain to you as to how much money is extorted. Your eyes are going to pop out. 
<laughs> there is no there is no system in the world including the cults forget about religions or tariqas there is no cult in the world which will extort that much money wow and and that money will be illegally transferred to aga khan in europe in swiss bank hmm this a massive international financial scam mm. and it is apart from being an affront to the islamic world so that's how they that's how aga khan becomes a, a very very rich person mm. in the world only about 125 years ago his grand great grandfather was a british pensioner Mm. he was a refugee from iran he 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 was living on a 2000 rupees pension per annum okay and then all of a sudden aga khan's grandfather becomes one of the richest man in the world mm. and by by basically establishing a club which will be named an islamic club mm. and where women actually go and dress as if they are going to a club mm does it answer your question that it gives us a lot of hints yes so is, is there no cog- cognitive dissonance meaning for example i see this guy is so rich we're all paying him money i'm so poor i'm not that well to do like how come he's a man of god or he's god and he's like going on boat rides and plane and jet planes and all that people don't feel like you know uh that wait there's some this is not this is not what religion should be about no they will not feel like that because remember i said to you in the beginning that when a child is born the child is completely hijacked Okay. the mind of the child is hijacked via psychological techniques mm. and as you might know as a psychologist that when a child is like 5 years or 6 years of age it, it is very unbiased and it is got no information it will accept the information that it is given to it and when that information is repeated repeated for the rest of its life that information will become a belief Mm. and it will become a rock hard belief mm. so in aga khan system you are brainwashed ever since you are a child and by the time you are 18 years of age everybody is wrong muslims are idiots okay okay and we are progressive muslims are backward mm. we are progressive okay uh, we are educated and they are okay i i accept that they are educated but they only have a university degree they are not educated because to be educated to me is to use the divine gift of intelligence mm. and that they refuse to use despite giving them concrete evidence of the wrong doing in the jamaat khana that's basically how sad it has become now they've had uh, control for a few generations now right almost like three generations you said yes yes so they th- this particular system started the commercial system hmm. it started only 125 years ago before that about 8 800 years or more the ismailis were in sync with islam in the sense that they they would pray like muslims would okay uh it was similar not exactly islam but since last 125 years it has completely transformed itself mm. and it's become a a commercial organization Hmm. So how did the I mean this is just for interest for me the 
how did the grandfather train the son and then the son train his son and carry this on like so successfully yes and this is why this is why the grandfather to me is no less than albert einstein <laughs> uh, apparently they both lived in the same age uh, mm. grandfather that is aga khan 3 and uh, albert einstein they they lived in the same uh, in fact the same country now this man has not got the recognition as a genius that einstein got but he created a system that is still going after 125 years a system where you can fool islam mm. system where you can fool your followers system where you can fool the governments of the world and get away with it how you tell me one person who has gotten away with so much mm. aga khan 3 did and he and he passed on this system to his grandson that is a karim aga khan mm. wow is there any collusion with like the british government or other government agencies uh yes yes actually the gra- great grandfather of aga khan he actually was a british mercenary oh wow he, he, yes in anglo afghan war in 1840 aga khan became a british mercenary and he killed thousands of muslims for the british Mm. and hence they are friends even today british and aga khan they are they are family friends mm. the, the queen and aga khan is family friends because is the relationship goes back 150 years mm. uh can you say something about you know when we're talking about psychological techniques to control people uh how was their the you know the organizational culture or the organizational hierarchy or and how did they do things like how did they get these funds 12% how did they did they control people through marriages did they uh yeah so like, what was the the organizational chart like who's around this person okay and- okay so the way it works is this let's talk about the structure so just like a multinational company you've got a ceo right up there right then you've got the middle management and then you've got the lower management and then you've got the labor force mm-hmm. correct yeah aga khan is structure is exactly that so there is a ceo which is aga khan and he is the only difference is that with the commercial structure everybody gets a pay uh, to to live uh, a wage to to take home with aga khan system the only financial beneficiary is aga khan oh. everybody else yes everybody else is serving the imam mm. so to serve the imam is the purpose of one's life mm. okay so they serve the imam and send him the money mm. so there is a ceo there is a top management there is a middle management and then there is the uh, la- labor force labor force will pay the money mm. the management will manage the money and they will basic and the top management will send the money to aga khan illegally i get it i get it so that goes through laundering processes of being laundered and all that so that correct no okay and um uh, how are they structured in terms of localities so let's say if i'm in new york there's 20 20 aga khan families in new york 50 let's say in new jersey or 50 in sydney or you know different cities have different amounts of people how are they how are they communicating and keeping them motivated and brainwashed uh every every jamaat khana has a brainwashing machine so everybody is put into that machine no sooner they step into the jamaat khana hmm. on a daily basis repeatedly whether you are a newborn 
or whether you are about to step into your grave. Hmm. So um, it's it's very interesting. Uh, how does marriage play into this? Do you inter? Do they intermarry only amongst each other? Not necessarily. They 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 marry uh, inter caste as well. Uh, inter religion marriages, but most of the marriages obviously happen within the thing. Hmm. Yeah, within the system. And you seem to allude to the fact that they're pretty well educated from a worldly perspective, a lot of them. Correct. This is and, and that uh, is where yeah. that is where the credit needs to be given to Aga Khan III. He is the one who actually started the whole game of encouraging the young girls to become educated hmm. and everybody to become educated. But in the process, he made a lot of money. So it is like establishing a business and telling everybody to go and buy from that business. In this, in the process, people got educated and he made money. Mm. I see what you're saying. So, okay. And then um, I, I looked up some things about Aga Khan, you know, looked at a few things. I mean, he's doesn't seem like a very charming person. I mean, it's like, he looks, I mean, it's not like he's, does he have charisma? Does he have charisma? Does he like... Well, like... you know, there is a saying in English, the beauty is, a, is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So, so the way you would see him is very different to, what, to how the, the, the spiritual children would see him. Hmm. What's the future? Now, of... I've got... Yeah, I've got some more questions that you've written down. But yeah, go for the for, go for the question. Yeah, uh, what's the future, future of the Aga Khan uh, cult, do you think? Cult. Okay, that is a very interesting and a very, is a, that question is very close to my heart. I would like to see the system closed down because it is abusive on many fronts. Mm. Islam is being abused. The government is being abused. People are being abused. Particularly poor people are being abused financially mm. on a regular, on a daily basis. Mm. So I have dedicated my life towards making sure that the system comes down. But there's a big but. I, I would like you to just imagine that how do you shut down a system where you have a multi-billionaire to fight against, number one. He is a royal, number two. He is a friend of the queen, number three. He is a close friend of the heads of states around the world. Wow. And then there is one man called Salim Lalani. He is a very, very common man on the street. And he has to fight this man. Hmm. And Muslim Umar wouldn't support him. The Ismailis wouldn't support him. He is standing there, out there, out in the open, all alone. Mm. But what this man has achieved so far, I'll talk about that in a minute. Mm. But before yeah. I talk about what I've achieved, yeah. but be before I talk about what I've achieved so far, I would like you to tell me how easy would it be in that situation that you are facing a giant and Muslim Ummah has got nothing to do with it. How easy do you think uh, is going to be to close down that cult? Well, uh, every business would fight tooth and nail to survive. You know, and if it's a billion dollar business. Correct. It's going to survive tooth and nail. And so, Correct. you know, Correct. there is a way to uh, identify the money laundering and stop their income. Uh, somehow. Uh, okay, so, so yeah, so, so do you agree with me? Oh yeah, that it is, it is, it is a mammoth task. Mammoth, yes, absolutely. It is, it is. Okay, now, as I said, there is this giant on one side, and then there is this common man on the other side. When I started uh, in twenty twenty one. Everybody, first of all, disconnected with me. Mm. 
my family my friends they they basically excommunicated me Smart. they said that na na we are, we've got nothing to do with you you have become a traitor may god bless you a billion times i mean now that is sacrifice number 1 i lost my family then i lost my business because a lot of my business was coming from uh, agahanis so this so is part of the the webbing right this is part of yes, the yes yeah they yes they disown you once you say anything about aga khan negative you are gone okay that is the, that is how the cults work is they have 100% loyalty towards the leader and the leader yeah anyway so that's how it started i said that look i'm going to fight anyway and they said you have gone crazy you need to be admitted to a mental hospital because you are do you know who who you are fighting and i said i don't care who i am fighting i have been instructed by my allah to fight and i'm going to fight whether anybody is going to support me or nobody is going to support me i know one thing for sure that if my intentions are good my allah will definitely support me yes and brother he did now listen to this he how did allah help me muslims didn't allah did this is how he did when i started in 21 i approached aga khani system and i said that look i have now completed my research on aga khan and i'm about to go on air and i'm going to blow it up completely do you want to basically come and talk to me so that we can agree to certain conditions and my conditions brother were only two i i i said to them that look number one you stop desecrating allah number two you stop looting poor people only mm. two mm. nothing else you mm. can keep the system the way it is stop looting the poor and stop desecrating allah okay and they said go away go away they 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 didn't have anything to do with me okay i said okay i'm going on air and i did usually what happens because they are so big so many people have tried this in the past and nobody has got anywhere but guess what the power of allah and power of internet mm. look what happened this this they shoot me away in january of 21 mm. and in march 21 they came to me and they said what what the hell are you doing you need to stop this mm. i said remember remember i came to you because in march my video had taken off and it was getting viral and the the content of that video if you watch my videos is pretty damaging to mm. the whole system mm. it it reveals all the inside Uh, of the of the system mm. and that they cannot allow that they it's dangerous mm. okay so they got scared in march of 21 and i said and they started threatening me so i said yeah you can go and do what you want to do and then again after two months they came and uh, uh, intimidate me again i said you go and do what you want to do unless you meet my demand of stop insulting allah and stop looting poor people i am not stopping hmm. the next thing i get two phone calls within a span of two months two phone calls offering 25 million dollars wow exactly the same amount both calls coming from london that's where the lawyer is that's where aga khan's lawyer is two people saying the same thing and when i refused they both disappeared the next day mm. they came as my my helpers they said look salim we are going to help you with your cause and when they established the repo with me they slowly offered me that 25 million dollars and the the minute i refused it they both disappeared okay so intimidation didn't work 
bribing me didn't work. The next thing they do is they send me a letter from their London-based lawyer. Mm. They are called Carter Ruck. Carter Ruck, if you Google them, they are one of the biggest lawyers, if not in the world, in, in uh, England. They are the, one of the biggest. Wow. And Aga Khan uses them mm. for his work. Okay. And they send me a letter. Salim, you need to stop or else. And I, I got my lawyer to send them a letter <laughs> that you can do what you want to do. So what has happened, brother, is for the first time in history, Aga Khan is scared of me. Mm. I have got the front foot. He has got the back foot. Mm. He tried everything to stop me. He even tried to stop my YouTube channel. It didn't work. Mm. Okay. So we are now at a historical uh, place mm. where we, uh, at the moment, is me only, unfortunately, that has got this far. If Muslims should basically stand up and say, how dare you insult my Allah? How dare? Mm. I can promise you, brother, Aga Khan is gone. Mm. All I need is a few Muslims to stand up. Mm. Even, even out of 1.5 billion Muslims, even if 500 Muslims come with me. Really? And come, come with me, for God's sake. I'm holding my hands in front of you. Only 500 of you come with me and just question Aga Khan. We are not fighting. We are very peaceful. We are just asking in a very... Uh, we are basically appealing to him that please stop insulting my Allah. That's all. Mm. The day that happens, brother, Aga Khan is gone. The system will collapse. Mm. Now, the challenge is to find the 500 people to sign a petition and send it to Aga Khan. Mm. That look, this is not this is, you can't fool us anymore. Internet is here. Hmm. We didn't know what you were doing behind the closed doors. But now, internet has basically exposed everything. That you are, you are basically comparing yourself or becoming a lie yourself. Hmm. Wow. 500 people you think would do it. I think we should be able to get much more than that, personally. There you go. If you can do this, you will go in history as a person who brought down Aga Khan. Mm. I can challenge you that much. And I'll tell you why. Let me explain to you why. Because Aga Khan does not like two things. Publicity, negative publicity. His system works on the, on, on the condition that he should not get any negative publicity, number one. So his brainwashing keeps working. <laughs> Correct. Number two, Muslim negative publicity. No way. He cannot afford to get on the bad side of the Muslims. He just cannot. Hmm. He, will, he will basically he will go mad if, if, if Muslims stand up. See, people like me Okay, he can threaten, he can, he can basically send lawyers, letters, not Muslim community. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you, can, if you can do only this much, that you, you get a petition organized, which basically simply says this much, that we are folding our hands and we're saying, please stop insulting my Allah, that's it. Hmm. And stop looting the poor people. And this is the evidence of it. Does the top leadership know that something is wrong? Top leadership is a part of it. So they're also be uh, benefiting? They get money. Oh, they get big money. Let me give you an example. Hmm. Say, say there is $10 million to be, to be, to be uh, transported or smuggled or money laundered from America to Switzerland, you get 5% of that $10 million. Oh, wow. Okay. 
And um, how do they see the Muslim world, the rest of the Muslim world? It's irrelevant to them or are they? Oh, very backward people. Backward people. Very, well, very backward people. What advice and, would you give to somebody that wants to leave the cult like you did? Well, I, I said, see, this is my position. That I say to them that, look, you want to stay within the Aga Khani system, it's your prerogative. Who is Salim Lalani to advise you where to go? But by remaining in the system, you are participating in a non-Islamic and a fraudulent system. Mm. Each and every one of you. So get out. A lot of people have after they watch my videos. Oh, really? And I get, Allah. yeah, and they, joined, yeah. and they joined Islam. Okay. A, a lot of them left. A lot of them are still there because they have social pressures. Their business will collapse if they leave. Hmm. But a lot of them have left. A lot of them have stopped paying money to Aga Khan. Hmm. Yeah? Wow. Uh... <clears throat> The um, I saw an article where it shows that Aga Khan owns the island. Yes. And uh, there were some pictures about him being on a boat and he's kind of like immodest with girls around him. And so the what is the what does the community say? No, no, these are lies against our, yes. our leader. Yes. Yes. These yes. are lies against our leader. They, they will say, oh, these are Photoshop. But they are actually get his images. They are most genuine images. Okay. Th those pictures, I have put them on my channel as well. And nobody has been able to challenge me so far. Those pictures. Mm. Okay. Uh, but as far as Aga Khan's moral life is concerned, he has been caught committing adultery mm. twice when he was an imam. First wife, he was having an affair with a girl. At that time, he was a father of three children and a, and a spiritual father of 15 million people. Mm. At that time, he got caught with a girl who was a Playboy magazine model. Oh, wow. Yes. Pilar Goes. Pilar was an Austrian girl. She mm. was only 23 at the time. And she was modeling for Playboy. And Aga Khan got into an affair with her and got caught. Okay. And she took him to court and the court agreed that, yes, you have committed an adultery. The divorce is granted. Mm. Then he gets married to another model. First one was a model as well, a British model. Then he marries a, a German model. And the same thing with the second one. She catches him having an affair with an airline hostess. Hmm. And she basically hires uh, private detectives to take the pictures. Hmm. And she presents the pictures in the court. The court agrees that, yes, you again, you're again caught with your pants down. Hmm. Okay, and this is the leader of Islam. Hmm. And the community keeps denying all this. There are people yeah, like they will say, "Oh no, no, this is all wrong. It's, it's a propaganda," you know. Okay, that's interesting because it's not like he's some monk sitting on a mountain where people can go see him. I mean, he's doing something, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, how how do they use these? How do they use rituals or religious rituals or prayers or? Uh, you know, spiritual things to control people. Yeah, so the rituals are, are basically based on worship of Aga Khan. Okay, so you know how in the Islam you say a prayer, which is called a salah. Mm. And in the salah, you, you basically pray a few ayahs of the Quran and your prayers. Uh, in the Aga Khani system, they also uh, basically uh, use a few ayats of the Quran, but those ayats are designed in such, a, uh, interpreted within the same prayer 
to make it favorable to aga khan make him appear as the representative of god mm. i see so those ayas are manipulated like, like ayas cannot be manipulated ayas are the way they are but 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 the they meaning the interpretation yeah. will be will be manipulated what are some signs of uh, mismanagement of funds in 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 an organization and your background is finance so i'm sure that you would be you're almost like you would be an expert in this question is it for any muslim uh, that's working in an organization or any human being for that matter working in an organization particularly a cult organization not working in but working with what are some key signs do you think uh, that okay this is not this is not transparent work here this this is definitely mismanagement happening here what are some signs that people can look into or think about or know so that they they had they know this so that if they're ever being abused they can say well this definitely doesn't look right if you want to type on google god's money okay god's god's money not my channel right god's money Uh, a documentary by canadian broadcasting corporation there is a documentary and i'll tell you a brief story as to what that documentary is about in america in seattle a car is basically trying to cross the border into canada and the customs officer asks the driver have you got anything to declare and he says no mm. and on a hunch the the, the 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 officer finds that man a little bit suspicious in his actions so he says okay open the boot of the car so he opens the boot of the car mm. it was absolutely clean the officer still believes that there's something wrong here so he gets him to open the tire well mm. so open the tire well and in the tire well there are millions of dollars in cash mm. so he said okay park the car there we'll come and talk to you they started an investigation into this cash and they found that the cash was basically going to aga khan's swiss bank account wow this 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 investigation was jointly done by the us and canadian governments Mm. and based on that investigation that documentary has been prepared okay so there was a massive money laundering uh, racket going on only yesterday another one came up uh, in houston where three aga khan is uh, under arrest mm. for criminal activities mm. and for money laundering as well in the state of new york a few years ago habib bank was fine habi bank is one of aga khan's okay pakistani bank yeah. aga khan owns that bank oh wow that's a major it got it, it got fined by the new york state hmm. for 225 million dollars for money laundering uh, issues hmm okay a, a bank in U- uh, uh, uganda uh, uh, ugandan court has sent aga khan a summons on charges of you tell me what charges of theft mm. that case is still going on in the supreme court mm. imagine this charges of theft there is there is this man in in uganda is a property developer mm. and he was one of the biggest clients of the bank the dtp bank Hmm. a diamond trust bank which is owned by aga khan he deposited millions of dollars in that uh, branch and the money disappeared oh and the man basically sued aga khan and the bank and the so supreme court has basically uh, is is uh, basically looking at that case right now hmm so these are only some of the examples of how clean this pan is 
how clean, okay. So um, why is the Pakistani government or Pakistani elite not interested in doing something about this, you think? I think you would be in a better position to answer that question because I'm at a loss. Some people say to me that Aga Khan has them in their pockets because he contributes so much to the economy. Um, and Pakistan, as you might know, that- is Well, if he owns on the a bank, bank, yeah, he basically controls the economy. <laughs> correct, correct. So, so the Pakistani government cannot afford to be on his bad side. Mm. That's what a lot of people say to me. Mm. Is there any, uh, if you're, I don't know if you have looked into this, but is there any clear outright uh, Satanism type uh, rituals? No, 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 no. Okay. No. Um, if somebody wants to leave, uh, what are they, are, would you, is there like, is there like a support system that they can call and say, look, I'm thinking of leaving or I have doubts. I don't know. I can't leave for X, Y reason. I, I guess your video is already kind of like shaking them up, uh, which is, you know, affects their funds, their bottom line, right? Because the more people shake are shaken up, the less they're willing to give, it, it, you know, even if they're members there, but they don't have confidence. They don't have trust. So even if you have all the members, but if you don't have trust, they're not going to be giving as much as, as, as they normally would. So Correct. I think, uh, do you have- well, they, can, you they, they can call me. I'm the helpline. Huh. So you can advertise my number on your system. Yeah. And uh, they can call me up. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll pass on my number and my contact details to you later. I'll text them to you. Yeah. You've already got my email. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think you all, that's all my we number. Need. That's all we yeah, need. Yeah. I would be very happy. I mean, consider me as, and my, and my listeners, uh, consider as, as, you know, as uh, people that are going to help you for sure. And Thank you. if there is a petition that you need me to get people to sign, I can send that out at some point too. Uh, okay. We can do so another me, interview in the Urdu language, and we can even like hit harder specifically on that, um, because you know all uh, nothing is isolated, right? Everything is interconnected. Pakistan's correct. political uh, chaos and the army and the bank; these are all interrelated, and uh, so the people that own the status quo, they they don't want no no person of the elite wants to upset the status quo Correct. But i think that uh that in order for pakistan to really be free one of the signs would be that they bring the Aga Khani, uh family down and because look in islam this banking system that we have the monetary system that's based upon riba interest uh, this is considered uh, haram in Islam. It's considered uh, a usury is considered a way of oppression of people, right? Where um, somebody um, buys something and then they have to pay off the interest even before they pay off the uh, the principal. You're in the financial industry, so you know how the, the housing collapse that happened uh, in 2007 here in the United States. And this whole riba, this interest base, I mean, in Islam, it's, it's the biggest sin after shirk, basically. Know that there is a war against Allah and his messenger. If you indulge in this interest-based, loan-based uh, system, like in America, which is considered the richest country in the world, but the average family has a debt of $8,000. Wow. You know, and and that's what it does. It 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 because you have you have demand and supply, and it forces your demand to increase because you have credit. So now you can demand more, and so now the supply, the business can increase to meet that demand. But everyone's buying at a level that they can't really afford to live, 
and right. uh, and and so what that does is it really breaks the whole economy apart because you know at some point uh, you have to pay and you can't pay and to me even like buying a house uh, for 30 years and people are going to have bad luck in 30 years six months of losing a job one year of losing a job and you know like when the housing crisis happened 40 million americans lost 40 million americans were affected i know i know this is yeah absolutely and and, and, so and now they're bringing that are... same you know that same system into the muslim world through habib banks and we'll give you a loan we'll give you a credit card everybody's living bigger than they really should should right? be yeah should be yep. And Absolutely. So, so there is the Aga Khani oppression within its people with shirk. And then there's the Aga Khani family oppression of the entire country Correct. because of this riba based system. And this is why Islamic Ummah should be concerned about Aga Khan. Hmm. What you just said. Yeah. That there is an, there is an oppression of Islam and then there's oppression of the public as well. Yeah. And this is what I'm fighting for. And yeah. I'm alone. No, you're not alone anymore. Inshallah, you'll have many friends very soon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And uh, look, I'm happy to come on your channel on a regular basis to do separate episodes mm. for separate topics mm. as to how did they become from Muslim to Hindus, is Aga Khanis. Mm. At the moment, it's a Hindu structure. So I'll explain that. Then I will go into details of the money laundering and the financial scam that is going on and who benefits and how does it all work. It is mind boggling. Mm. It is, you would not have seen a movie like that. Then we will go into the details of the morality of the Imam and the uh, ancestors. Mm. Okay. How colorful that has been. Okay, you will start scratching your head. I scratch my head so much that I lost all my hair. <laughs> okay. okay. So if you want me to, I can do a half an hour episode on each topic. Mm. And it'll go on for like 10, 15 episodes. Yeah, it is yeah. a very, very, it's a very, very elaborate story. Yeah, <clears throat> this... Uh, from another perspective is very important to me because this is a microcosm of uh, of this type of deception, religious deception. Correct. Uh, even in this case, it's not really that micro. I mean, you're talking about 15 million, you said, right? 15 million people. You know how much money is being laundered? $15 billion per annum. Wow. $15 billion. Yeah goes into Aga Khan's bank account. Hmm. It is massive. Yeah. It is massive. Yeah. Absolutely. And and it, it is mind boggling. So I'm happy to come on your channel on a regular basis okay. to give well, you we'll stay in touch and we'll do something every week or however you know Allah wills. Yeah. We'll just do it and we'll keep hammering it till now what I'll do in the meanwhile, I'll speak to the lawyer and see if they can prepare a petition and I'll pass on the petition to you. Okay. And then it's, I'll leave it to you, how many people you get uh, from there. And I will try from my end as well, my supporters, and we'll put them all together. The more the people, obviously, the more Aga Khan is going to be scared because mm. he cannot afford negative publicity from Muslims. Mm. Anybody else... That is understandable, not from Muslims. I see. He's very scared. And the, uh, before I go, <clears throat> I'll only say one thing for you. Hmm. If, any, if anybody can bring Aga Khan down completely, it is not Salim Lalani. It is the Muslim Ummah. Take this from me. Hmm. Hmm. Only they can do it. Hmm. Okay. Because Aga Khan is very scared of them. Hmm. Yeah? Yeah, Aga Khan is very so scared of the world because... Yeah, but, but the thing is, Muslim Ummah has to realize that he is desecrating Islam. <clears throat> At the moment, they are not. 
Hmm. Okay. And one more thing before I go is if you want me to come on your channel where your people, your audience is there and they have questions, I'm prepared to take the questions uh, live. Okay. Well, they're going to listen to this and they will be definitely responding. There and, you go. There you go. And I think, um, you know, this, inshallah, this can go very far if Allah wills. Thank you so much for your support, brother. I really appreciate this interview has been absolutely critical to my mission. Where, yeah. where I seem to be getting closer to Muslim support. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. Thank you so much, okay. sir. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Bye. Bye.